So I caught this cover on Netflix and I thought this could be creepy. So I do a quick Google search to get a little bit of info and I immediately start seeing articles. Eerie is the latest Netflix horror movie causing viewers to lose sleep at night. You don't say. Where have I heard this before? Veronica, 2018. This Spanish movie had articles, social media posts, viral videos, all talking about how this movie was the scariest movie they've seen in a while. And how can you pass up a cell like that? So I watched Veronica and it was cool. I don't remember most of it. I think that's a bad thing. But I remember thinking that it was definitely gassed up. Like it was some sort of industry plant. So Eerie wasn't in great company starting off. But after watching Eerie, this movie's kinda butt. <laughs> Why do you guys gas this shit up? I'm convinced you guys are just afraid of different languages. Ah, not Tagalog. Ah! Let me explain the movie. Or, better yet, can you just read the IMDB description while I get this ad ready? <clears throat> See how easy that was? Just having it there at the ready. I didn't have to manually convey this overly wordy description to you. Clairvoyant guidance counselor? Stephen A. Smith write this? This video is sponsored by NordPass. Now I'm sure you've dealt with password autofills or password generators, but let me tell you why I hate the ones that I've used. My Mac came with a password generator and I refused to use it because I could never figure out how to access what the password was. So if I chose to let them make it while I was creating an account, they'd flash dollar sign Y capital U89 dash dash comma MN boop -a loop for all of three seconds and then never show it again. So when I leave my Mac and I'm on my PC or phone and I'm trying to log into my new MySpace account and I can't cross check the password, I got to click forgot password. Then go through the process of verifying it's me by correctly answering the diameter of my ancestor's finger fingernails, having to go to the email to click the reset link. But oh wait, my mailboxes have all randomly disconnected. So I now have to re-log in. But I don't know my Yahoo password off the top of my head. So I gotta look for where I wrote it down. One second, one second. There it is. NordPass is great because it's the link between all of my devices. All my passwords safely stored. So go to nordpass.com slash MrGG to get 70% off a two year plan plus one additional month free. And this special Cyber Month deal will only be available till December 1st. That's nordpass.com slash MrGG. And thank you NordPass for sponsoring this video. Eerie. So there's a room called the comfort room in this all girls private school. The comfort room is essentially the bathroom of the Philippines. I don't normally know that. I was on Google for a bit and then I watched this 360p house tour for way too long. I digress. In the middle of the night, Anna has to pee, so she walks down like three corridors and goes up the stairs to make it to the comfort room. This director's a massive fan of bait scares. He'll lob up the cliche mirror shots, handheld quick pans back and forth. It's annoying, but you are constantly bracing yourself for a jump, which I guess is a good thing to a lot of people. And I get it, it's like a haunted house, right? It may not be inherently terrifying, but knowing that something could jump out at any turn is frightening. But I think for the horror movies I really enjoy, and I've always had trouble explaining this, I'm left with an uneasy feeling that lingers beyond the credits. And in a weird way, that's me giving it the thumbs up. But yeah, she dies. Well, at least I thought she did. Until like 25 minutes ago when I read someone's review saying, yeah, she uh, left the school. Oh, I'm either an idiot or that was poorly conveyed. Those are also not mutually exclusive. Miss Pat, the guidance counselor of this school, genuinely wants to help these girls, especially after the incident with Anna. And a ghost appears in her office, and she's super chill about it. Oh hey, it's Boo again. <laughs> Happy Halloween. Her name is Erica. She went to the school and died. And she's already talked to Miss Pat a few times. Pat wanting to figure out what happened to her so she can help assist other girls who might end up in a similar predicament. They're talking and she says something along the lines of, My father wasn't afraid of me either. In fact, there he is in the corner watching us. But you don't actually see him, which is creepy, right? But it's kind of funny when you imagine she has daddy issues and it's like, damn, he's dead, ain't got shit to do. He didn't go to your recitals in life and he won't show up to your hauntings and death. Literal deadbeat. Okay, so one of the girls, Clara, dies late at night and everybody suspects it's the maintenance man, Fidel. Well, also because the head nun, Soralis, kind of saw him on top of her. Yeah, we should probably vote him out. So moving through, Miss Pat and Erica have multiple convoluted interactions and after a point, it becomes redundant because they keep playing this awkward cat and mouse game. Erica keeps fucking with her, Miss Pat keeps tiptoeing to every location she's bat signaled to as to not alert her that she's now searching for her. But what the the fuck is the point of this? I understand Erica is trying to play her. She wants to gain her trust and pass off the blame of Claire's death. But why do you have to scare her 
to do that. And also, why do you even want to do that? Miss Pat isn't trying to stop you. And I also dislike the cop out of, well, she's just evil. Because I feel like that can work, just not here. Now I will dial back a bit and say there are interesting moments, like Pat's vision of seeing Soralis hanging Erica. I thought that was a neat little lead up to a scare. And I was happy with the ending of the movie too. It was a nice mix of emotions and I think it was the best send off they could leave us with. In this scene, there's a new story talking about Fidel being sent to death row for the death of the girl. And this is the funniest shot ever. This is supposed to be the news. Also in the news. And guys, this made me really happy. We have some happy news to share with you. For just 242 Philippine pesos, you too can bail out a creepy guy named Fidel. Listen, I'm just gonna expose myself. Um... Thoughts? <laughs> but seriously, I had a lot of trouble figuring out which girl was which. And I know what you're gonna say, don't worry. That's only partially the reason. There's two dead girls, right? And remember, I also thought Anna was dead and was a part of this whole fiasco. So whenever Pat saw somebody, I didn't necessarily know who she was talking to. The only girl in the movie that I could spot out was Joyce. And Joyce isn't even dead. <laughs> and that's not even why I knew that that's Joyce, because she's the only one alive. It was because she has bangs. By the way, Joyce is a girl who's starting to self-harm after all the commotion, and Pat really tries to look out for her. And listen, you can criticize me for not picking up on the character. That's fair. But the movie just didn't do a great job of separating those characters from me. I had the same issue in House of a Thousand Corpses. Another bone I have to pick with this movie is, if I'm going off the timeline of the movie, you're made aware that there is a rumor in the school about a girl haunting the last toilet in the bathroom because that's where she hung herself. Her name is Erica. The people who have heard the rumor know all of that. The ghost of Erica has already talked to Miss Pat like six times and Miss Pat does not know what happened to her. Because later on, a fellow nun reveals to Miss Pat that Sor Alice had a student that hung herself in the past. And she's seems so shocked like what what's your name i don't know take a guess pat Maybe it's that one ghost you talk to? Miss Pat gets that nun to go raid Sor Alice's office and she finds Erica's file and some film roll. I also like how she's shocked to later look at this even though she was just shocked to look at it. Miss Pat confronts Sor Alice and that's when Sor Alice reveals, I, I, so, I don't know, it's saying Sor Alice. I feel like I'm naming a Pokemon. Miss Pat confronts Alice and that's when Alice reveals to her that Erica is behind the killing of Clara. But Pat's a bit hesitant and also says that she's not gonna give up on Erica because that's not what she does. Detective Man gathers the confessions of the people Erica has possessed to kill, aka Fidel and Erica's own dad who killed her mother, and the confessions are almost identical. So after having that bomb dropped on her, Pat's plan is to go back to the school and talk it out with her. Pat's too good of a person and just wants to let Erica know that she will always be there for her. And Erica, being the crazy bitch she is, was like, oh, always? Okay, even when I go to hell. But while talking, Erica finally gives her lore. She had no friends, probably because she ate butterflies. She had a crush on a fellow classmate and that girl framed her to have a girl on girl moment to have the nuns beat her. Her parents sucked, so now she's taking it out on everybody. She has this self view that she's an outcast and that she's evil. And Pat can't comprehend that because she wants to help so bad. So Erica has now decided to kill her for this. Even though she doesn't mention torturing any of these little shits or even Sore Alice really. Her ass should have left a Sore Alice if you don't run. Uh, you know? Uh, what's going on? Erica possesses Detective Man to do the dirty work for her, but then... A new ghost! It's Clara, the girl who died on the lawn. This is about to be the craziest ghost demon battle of 2020. What is this, Code of Honor? So here's my main issue with this movie. Uh... Fat. <laughs> Erica has been big chilling. And here comes Clara. Erica has like seven years to react to this. I think that's like nine in ghost years. And Clara doesn't even push her. They just jump off together. But more importantly, they're ghosts. We don't hear a thud. We don't hear a splat. They're just like, ah. In addition, I even hate the lead up to this moment because there are certain villains you don't want to overshow. So this girl has worked in glimpses and shots from six miles away. But when she's taking up all this screen time and she's all close up and shit, Pat talks about the school being quiet with no disturbances since the incident and then sees the school big gloom crying faces. She walks into a room where Joyce is the only one left and it's Pat's funeral. She died while being strangled. Clara was too late. Probably shouldn't have fucking stood there for so long. But it ends with Joyce on the rooftop praying for Miss Pat's help in this breaking time and she jumps. But Miss Pat promised her she'd always be there and she is. She's still here. So heartwarming. 
Some of you might enjoy this one for a Halloween watch. I would personally advise against it. And I'll do you one better. I'll suggest you watch instead. Hell House LLC on Amazon Prime. I enjoy that one. You might too. Happy Halloween, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And here is your second reminder to please leave a like. Subscribe because I have more content coming your way. Shout out to Nipsu for retweeting my last video tweet. Shout out to my lovely, 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 lovely patrons for supporting the boy. I just uploaded my reaction to Chris Hansen's new investigation, which was ass. That's on my new Mr. GG live channel that I've been constantly promoting. Check out my Twitch. I stream every Tuesday and Thursday. And as always, I am Mr. GG and I am out. Mm.